Hi, I'm uh, Professor Neshiba, and I'm uh, here to tell you a little bit about Lewis acids and bases. This is an introduction to the idea in which we're just going to use Lewis structures to, uh, to understand this, this idea. So, Lewis uh, acid-base chemistry requires a base, and I'm just going to symbolize that as B. It's not any particular element. Uh, I'm just writing B. But the key thing is that this, this uh, whatever the base is, it has to have a lone pair of electrons. So uh, an example of that could be ammonia, nitrogen with three hydrogens bonded to it, but uh, it has a lone pair of electrons. And uh, so we think of the rest of this as B, and there's the lone pair. Also, water um, would be a good Lewis base, because it, it has two lone pairs of electrons. And the fluoride ion, you know, because it has a full octet of, of electron pairs, um, could also be a, a good Lewis base. How about the Lewis acid? Well, the example that I'm giving you here is BF3. The main thing to note about the Lewis acid is uh, what you look for is, um, is an unfilled octet. Um, the point is that it, uh, it has uh, the capability of accepting uh, um, uh, this lone pair of electrons uh, from the Lewis uh, base. And examples, well, I've given BF3. Uh, the silver ion, SO3, are all good Lewis acids. Now, what's the uh, stoichiometry of the reaction that happens? Well, the base with its lone pair combines with the acid to produce something called BA. And the BA gets a special name in Lewis acid base chemistry, and it's called the Lewis acid base adduct, or just the adduct. The thing to note about the adduct is that there is a bond between the B and A, and that bond also has a special name. It's called a dative bond. And finally, the electrons that go into making that bond, it's two electrons, are the same as those electrons right there. That is to say, the Lewis base provided the electrons to make the dative bond. Okay.